And this is, of course, lines up with God's calendar because we are counting 30 and 40 days or 30 days or 31 days in the month. But I want to tell you, according to God's calendar, we only got a few days to live. Secondly, God has set that time for your death. No matter how sick you are, you ain't going no place until that time. So can I tell you, if you are sick and you're looking towards death, if that's all you can think about, you might as well cheer up and live your life until God says, your time is no more. And then in verse number 10, gives us three points. Again, to reiterate, he says that you're going to die. Secondly, the body goes back to the dust. The body goes back to the dust. And thirdly, the body releases the spirit. Your spirit will not go into the grave with your body. You see, some people believe when you are dead, you are dead. And as you are now, they drop everything in the coffin and put that down there. No, sir. No, sir. And so Job says, he says that the body releases the spirit. He puts it like this. He says, the body of man gives up the ghost. And then he asks the question, and where is he? Where is he? Now let me come back to that question. Draw your attention to the book of Psalms, chapter 90, Psalms 90, division. And in the book of Psalms, Moses here is again challenging the people of God regarding some things that have happened. And some things that, that, that they ought to recognize. And he says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or even thou hast formed the earth the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, he says, you are God. Can I tell you that he and he alone is God? Thou turnest man to destruction and says, return, you children of men. In other words, I want to tell you that wherever we find ourselves in sin, living against the will of God and the laws of God, he turns us to destruction and calls us back to him at the time of our death. Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in his sight about yesterday when it is past. And as a watch in the night, very short intervals, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning, they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and uh, wither away. For we are consumed by the end, by thine anger, and uh, by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set up our iniquity before thee. Our secret sins is in the light of thy countenance. Do we have any secret sins with us today? Our secret sins is ever in the countenance of God. And so the pastor or the brother or the sister, mama and daddy may not know of our sins. But rest assured, they shine in the presence of Almighty God. Our sins are ever before God. If we have attempted to hide our sins, let me tell you, it may be hidden from your brother, your sister, your mother, or your father, or even your priest or your reverend, but I want to tell you that before God, your secret sins are forever known. Amen, somebody. And so, in this countenance, our secret sins are always revealed. The days of our lives are three score years and ten, seventy years. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, eighty, eighty years. Yet there remains strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and be 
flies away. Moses asks a question that is so serious here. In verse number 11, he says, Who knows the power of thine anger? And he is asking this question in relation to the life that the people live. To the hidden and secret sins that individuals would think nobody else knows. Who knows the power of God's anger? The power of God's anger. The power of God's anger. That drowns an entire world. Men, women, and children because of sin. Because they rebelled against God's will. He burnt a whole city, twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. Who knows what is anger as relates to sin? You've got to understand that it is God who, who, who his anger is what causes him to bring everything, to wrap it all up and cost the, the entire nation, the entire twin city, men, women, and children, to be literally wiped off the map. Who knows the power of his anger? It is his anger that opens up a hole in the ground and swallows all those who challenge his authority. And Moses, and so Moses stands aside and said, all those who are on the Lord's side, you stand with me. And all of those who came with him were saved. But those who stood aside, who, who rejected the will of God, who withstood and who, who rebelled against God and his will, the earth opened up, the scriptures declared it, and swallowed them all up because of the anger of God. My God, who knows the power of his anger. I want to talk to you this morning because I believe that as we live our lives today, that God's eyes is upon every individual. Yeah. And all of those who rebel against his will, against his word, and against his son, Jesus Christ, his anger will soon be unleashed. Who knows the power of his anger? When things seem to be going your way, we as people, as Mankind, we tend to live our lives the way that we want to. But who knows the power of God's anger? And if he had done it before, he can do it again. And if they, he did it because of sin, because he is a just and a righteous God, he will do it again. So no sin will go unspoken for. And I listen quite attentively. And they call the Bible all sorts of things, an outdated book. They call the Bible, you know, it's out of date and it's an old book that governs us from years ago. But I want to tell you, my friends, the word of God stands forever. It's forever settled and glory. And his word, my friends, will judge us. Measure thy lips, the hearts of men will be judged. How do you stand before God? Who knows the power of his anger? How are you living? Are you living your life to please God? Who knows the power of his anger? I'm going to suggest to you this morning that if you do not know Jesus Christ, today is your time. Now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Who knows the power of his anger? He's done it before and he'll do it again. You've got to reverence God in everything you do. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you acknowledge him, he'll make your path straight. I'm not telling you that you're going to live without sickness or disease in this world, but I want to tell you that your path Men straight before God. You will live a life of peace. And so then let's come back to the words or the question in the book of Job as I close. Question 
You want to close with, you see, Job made it clear. He said, man gives up the ghost, and where is he? I want to suggest to you this morning that when you're dead, you're not done. Just as God formed man with his hands from the dust of the earth, and he blew into that body that 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 dust just laid there. Man, as a as a human being, just laid there. But when he blew the breath of life into that body, he then became a living soul. And so that body that is dead that goes back to the dust. He says the the, the body goes back to the dust. But he says in his word, he says that 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 the man himself, the spirit. Returns to God. Watch in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Well, let's read a little more. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Paul says here, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That everyone may receive the things done in his body. My friends, your behaviorism, the life you live in this body, you will give account for every day you die. One time ago, we had a gospel group used to say, God is writing all the time. And so you will give account for the deeds you've done in your body according to that which you have done, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good or bad, you're going to give account to God for it. Knowing therefore the terror of God, in other words, Paul is coming back to the same thing, the anger of God, knowing the anger of God, he says, be persuaded man. We are telling men that you ought to get right now. Come to Jesus right now. Accept him as Lord and Savior right now. We warn and persuade man that you ought to return to God right now. Knowing the terror of God, we persuade man. All right, now come back to Luke chapter 16. We're we'll closing here. Luke chapter 16. And it came to pass that the beggar Lazarus died. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, a place of peace, a peaceful place. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. And he saw Abraham and Lazarus. One is in a peaceful place, the other is in a place of torment. The question is, where is your spirit after you die? That is what we are trying to find out. And so, here in this book chapter in Luke, Jesus is pointing us to the fact that you are either in hell or you are in heaven. You are either in a place of peace and contentment or you are in a place of torment. Your spirit returns to God. God then assigns you a destination. You have chosen by the life you live while on earth. You make the decision. God does the assignment. Your spirit goes to one out of those two places. The choice is yours. I'm sure Shante has made her a choice. And she's gone. Whatever her choice was, she is living that reality today. But we still have a chance, eh? All of us has a chance. And so as we close this segment, you know already that when you're born, you know for sure we're going to die. Anybody know that you're going to live forever? In this body? Nobody knows that. We know that we're going to die. And we know for sure that we're going to give account to God for all the deeds that we've done in our body, whether it be good or whether it's evil. And we know for sure 
that the life we live on earth determines where we spend eternity. What is your position today? I'm going to ask you to stand with me right where you are. In fact, don't stand. Just reach over and touch somebody's hands. Hold hands with somebody. Hold hands with somebody. And as you hold hands today, consider where are you going to spend eternity? Bow your heads with me. I don't want you to pray for anybody else. I want you to pray for yourself. God, this is my position with you. Wash me thoroughly. Forgive my sins. I want to live in a place, in a peaceful place. I want to live in heaven with you. You have the opportunity today to make sure that you have a place of rest. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we thank you. Thank you for this privilege. God, we know that our lives are uncertain, and we know that it is short. We know, Heavenly Father, that our lives are filled with trouble of all kinds. But we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. We now submit to the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash us thoroughly from all unrighteousness and all sin. God, that we might prepare our hearts for your coming. Bless, touch, and heal in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father.
but God always knows what's best. May the peace that comes from the love that you share with Shante comfort you now and in the days ahead. Like the poet Maya Angelou, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never, ever forget how much you made them feel. Hence I say to you that love is stronger than death. Even though it cannot stop death from happening, and no matter how hard death tries, it cannot separate people from love. It cannot take away our memories either. So in the end, I say, that love is stronger than that. So keep Shantae alive in your heart. Because to live in the hearts we leave behind is never to die. We must not seek death, because death will find us for sure. But seek the role which makes death a fulfillment. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to strengthen you. And let me show you of our prayerful, helpful, Prayers on the feet. God bless you.
Kelly, Reverend Willis Markey, who was on the guitar, our district youth director for the Church of God here in the Bahama. We also have Reverend Peter Evans, pastor of Lighthouse International Ministries, Reverend Barry Morris and his beautiful wife, Latif, from the Hepburn Town Church of God of Prophecy. And it, is, it does my heart such good pleasure to see the former youth director for Hospital Church of God, who was also Shante's um, youth pastor, the controller of road traffic, Mr. Ross Smith. Tiny Stan, he's down there. We have Reverend Glenn Nesbitt from Holy Highway Deliverance. And former Hospitalian. I would like for all the staff of Commonwealth Bank to kindly stand the, the current staff and the former staff members, kindly stand so we can recognize you all. Let's give them a big round of applause today. God bless each and every one of you for standing by her. I'd also like to recognize the teachers, some of our former teachers and principal of Catholic High School and Walter Parker, if you're here, kindly stand for us. Mr. Controller, what do you, you call? 